Kingdom Seekers television broadcast where Jesus is our King. We give God praise, thanksgiving, and adoration for another privilege and a glorious opportunity to share with you a living word from God. And yes, I do have a word for you today. Please grab your Bibles, open them up to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 7. While you're at it, you might as well go and look up the Gospel of Luke chapter 6. That's Matthew chapter 7 and the Gospel of Luke chapter 6. Please make sure that you have a pen some type of highlight or something to write on. I would prefer that you had a clean sheet of paper as we continue our series on healing from a kingdom perspective. Healing from a kingdom perspective. Father, we bless you and we thank you for giving us wisdom and insight when it comes to divine healing and health, the kind of health that comes from heaven where you are the source of all healing, Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals us. We thank you for the blessing and privilege to feed upon your holy written word. And we pray for insight that your blessed Holy Spirit would unveil, unfold and reveal the truth of your word to our reborn spirits, that he would illuminate our minds, speak to our hearts, Lord. Enlighten us as it is written, the entrance of your word gives us light. We thank you, Father, for the Holy Ghost, whom you have sent to be our teacher and to be our guide. We expect him to live big in us today. We thank you so much, Heavenly Father, that your word will feed our spirits, renew our minds, minister healing and strengthen our physical bodies, and give us wisdom so that we can navigate through the vicissitudes of life. In Jesus' name, amen. So we've been studying for the last few weeks of the end of last year and on into this year. By the way, Happy New Year to you. Healing from a kingdom perspective. And we discovered that the word perspective simply means how does heaven view healing? How does heaven see it? What is God's mental outlook when it comes to the subject of divine healing and health? Now, we found out that it is God's will to heal sick bodies today. I'm going to say that again because it's so, so vital. Most of our hang-ups as human beings, as believers, in whether or not we can receive healing from heaven is not knowing whether it's God's will or not. So let me say again. It is God's will to heal sick bodies today. Did you hear me clearly? Now, how do we know that? Well, we went to our foundational scriptures in the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verses 4 and 5. The Bible says, Surely he, speaking of Jesus, has borne our griefs, that's the Hebrew word, sicknesses, weaknesses, and distresses, and carried our sorrows and pains. Again, study that out. I've given you references to Dr. Strong's concordance and Dr. Young's analytical concordance. Study all this out and see it for yourself. So surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, verse 4. He was bruised for our iniquities, verse 5. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes, listen, we are healed. Now that's in the Bible. We also gave you a second witness from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 8, verses 16 and 17. The Bible says, When the evening was come, they brought unto him, still speaking about Jesus, many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. The third witness was in the book of 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 24. The Apostle Peter says, looking back at what Isaiah prophesied about, who his own self, again speaking of Jesus, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree or on the cross. That's where it took place. That we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. Glory to God. 
God. That's wonderful news. And so, it is God's will to heal sick bodies today. Now, when you look at the ministry of Jesus, this is so, so vital, because the Lord Jesus Christ himself said, I came not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. So, if we want to know what the will of God is, all we have to do is look at Jesus, right? I mean, that makes sense to me. If he came right out of his mouth and said, I didn't come to do on my own will. I'm not here on account of me or based on what I want. I'm here to fulfill the will of him that sent me. Now, what was God's will? Well, write this scripture down, Acts 10, 38. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Glory to God. And so God anointed him. That was God's will for him to go about doing some good and the Bible called healing good. Praise God. God, so that's great news for you and me, that it is God's will to heal sick bodies today. Are you getting this? Now, we've also discovered in our studies that there are such a thing, or there is such a thing, as the vicissitudes of life. Let me read that to you. Go to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 7. Look at verse 24. Jesus is speaking. Therefore... Whosoever hears these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew. Did you get that? Rains descend, floods come, winds blow. He's talking about the vicissitudes of life. Life's challenges, life's changes, life's tests, life's trials that come upon every human being on the face of the earth. Doesn't matter about your political affiliation, doesn't matter what continent you're on, doesn't matter if you're male or female, Republican or Democrat, the vicissitudes of life come upon us all. There has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. That's in the Bible, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. So we know stuff comes. Now, Jesus advised us to take shelter. Listen to what he said. He that comes to me, here's what I have to say, and puts it into practice. He's like a wise man that built his house. Now, notice that. Underline it if you have to. He built his house upon a rock. Now, the house I discovered, I like to call it, a healing house. That's what we're talking about. We're going to talk about how to build a healing house. In other words, we know the storms of life are out there. We know sickness and disease is already out there. We know every time you turn around, there's a new sickness, a new disease, a new medication for this, a new medication for that. And so we know it's already out there. The Bible says we are in the world, but we're not of this world. But while we're here, Satan, that demonic spirit, is called the God of this world. 2 Corinthians 4, 4. Please write that down. Go look it up for yourself. Now, Jesus has redeemed us from sickness and disease. You'll find out in Galatians 3, 13. We'll get to that later in our study. I'm just laying a foundation. He redeemed us by being made a curse for us on that cross. That's where he bore our iniquities. That's where he bore our sickness. That's where he bore our disease. That's where he bore our poverty. That's where he bore our shame. That's where he bore every damnable thing known to man. Jesus, the Lamb of God, took away the sin and all that came with it upon himself when he was on the cross. Now, in order for what Jesus did to become a reality to you and a reality to me, in other words, where we experience the benefits of our full redemption, you and I have to actively engage in that salvation. In other words, we have to do something. Praise God. There's an enemy that's arrayed against us that's going to see to it that we stay away from the knowledge we need to act upon what God has made available to us. Jesus said 
that that thief came to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what the Bible says. See, he said, but I came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. So you and I have a part to play. The thief is on one side trying to steal, kill, and destroy. The Lamb of God, the Good Shepherd, is on the other side seeing to it that we get life and life more abundantly. And you and I have to choose. The Bible says, Behold, I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, therefore you choose. So we have a choice to make, saints. And now, I choose, and I'm going to show you how to choose, to build a healing house to shelter us from sickness and disease. Are you following me? Glory to God. Let's read our text again. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds of adversity blew. Watch this. It beat upon that house, the one that the man or woman who was a doer of the word built. Now notice it said who built the house. See? A lot of people waiting for Jesus to do something. Folks, I have news for you. And I say this as humbly and lovingly as I know how. God has done everything he's going to do. It is your turn and my turn to act. The Bible says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Jesus said that. He said nothing about making the way. He said, I am the way. And when he bore your sin and mine at the cross of Calvary, when he bore your sickness and disease and mine at the cross of Calvary, when he rose victoriously from the dead, after he spoiled principalities and powers, he said, all power, all authority is given unto me in heaven and earth. Therefore, you go authorizing you and I to take that same authority and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, cast out devils, lay hands on the sick, and get them to recover. Praise God forevermore. It's the ministry of reconciliation. So it's on us now. The ball is in our court. Now, we build a house. Did you get that? Go to Luke chapter 6. This is how I live. I desire, because God desires, for you to be in health, glory to God, for you to prosper even as your soul prosper. That's in 3 John verse 2. Did you know that? Hold your place and look. Look over there and look at that. This is God's desire for you, folks. 3 John 2. There's only one chapter there. Listen to God talk. This is, this is so, so good. This is what he says. Beloved, folks, that's about as affectionate as you can get. Your heavenly Father is saying to you, My beloved, glory to God, I, watch this, wish above all things. Not some things, not half things, not just a few things, not even several things. The actual Greek says, It is is my earnest desire. In other words, God said, this is what I want more than anything else for you. Praise God, because you're my beloved. He says, I want you to prosper. I want you to be in health. Somebody say, it is God's will for me to be healed. Say it again. It is God's will for me to be healed. Say it again. It is God's will for me to be healed. There it is right there. He said, my beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper, above all things that you be in health, even as your soul prospers. So God is not just interested in you getting born again and going to heaven. Baby, he wants some money in your pocket and he wants your well. Glory to God, that's good news. Go to another one. Go to Galatians chapter 1. We'll get back to Luke in a moment. Galatians chapter 1. Listen to the Apostle Paul speak in behalf of the head of the church, the Lord Jesus Christ. This is good stuff. Look at uh, verse 3 and 4. Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, 
who gave himself for our sin. Now, that's what we're talking about. Jesus giving himself at the cross of Calvary. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, Galatians 3, 13. He gave himself. Now, watch this. That he might deliver us from this present even world. Underline that word present. That means right now, folks. Right now, presently. 2017. Praise God. Present evil world. Watch this. According to the will of God our Father. Now, what more do you need? The Bible says, Jesus gave himself for our sins. Now, we know from Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, and Galatians 3, 13, that includes sickness and disease and poverty. That's our full redemption. That belongs to us. Glory to God. And he said he did that according to the will of God. That's our Father's will. That we prosper, that we be in health, even as our soul prosper, that we're delivered from this present evil world. And that includes the present sickness and disease of this time. Don't care what it is. If it's in the present, it's God's will that you be delivered. Praise God. That's shouting ground. That means it doesn't matter what the enemy comes up with. If it's present, it's God's will for me to be delivered. Boy, say it again. It is God's will. For me to be healed. Say it again. It is God's will for me to be healed. Say it again. It is God's will for me to be healed. And baby, I just gave you some scriptures for it. Now you write those down. You meditate on them. You get a grasp of them in your reborn spirit. Let them saturate your mind. Let it come out of your mouth. Let it be your daily delight. Praise God and what he's done for you. Because like I said, the biggest hang up is whether I wonder if it's God's will to heal me. Well, baby, I just gave you several scriptures to prove that it is. Praise God. And the thing that I really, really, really like about this when you, when you teach truth, biblical truth, uh, with a pure and unadulterated heart, I mean, on a regular basis, and the Holy Ghost is my witness, I raise my hand to God and I say, Sir, I, I refuse to handle your word deceitfully. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to slight men. I'm not trying to manipulate nobody. Nope, not going to do it. That's just me. You can do what you want to do. I made up my mind, this is not about money, this is not, not about manipulation, this is not about status and title and what you call me or don't call me, see? And when you do that, the Word of God is just so plain to you. I mean, it speaks for itself. How somebody can read the Bible and think it's God's will for you to be sick is just beyond me. Where did you get that? What, what school did you go to so I can stay away from it? <laughs> what church did you go to so I can stay away? What preacher told you that so I can stay away? Because where in the world did you get that? When the Bible says, he gave himself for my sins that he might deliver me from this present evil world according to the will of God. So it's God's will for me to be delivered. It's God's will for me to be healed. Third John 2, we just read it. Beloved, I want you to prosper. I want you in health. So why in the world would you even come to me with it? Get away. Back, back, back. Get away from me. I don't want to hear it. No, it's God's will for me to be healed. Say it again. It is God's will for me to be healed. Say it again. It is God's will for me to be healed. Praise God forevermore. All right, go back to the Gospel of Luke. Let's go to verse 47. Now, this is the same account of what we just read, except we're hearing it from a physician's perspective. If you don't already know that, Dr. Luke, the man that wrote this particular gospel, he is a physician. You'll find that in the book of Colossians, the Bible calls him Luke, the beloved physician. It goes that word beloved again. So he's a child of God too. So he ought to know. And he ought to know something about some healing since he's a physician. And listen how he gives a little bit more detail on what Matthew said. He says in verse 47, Whosoever comes to me, now listen to Jesus. He's the great physician. He said, 
And here's my saying. I love this. I love how Jesus keeps things just so simple. You know, we, we make it deep. But he makes it come to me and hear my sayings and put them into practice. Now, Matthew said that's a wise move, see. Luke goes a little deep and he says, he's like a man, not only wise, but when he built his house, he did deep. Now, if you know anything about engineering and housing, when you're laying a foundation, baby, you need to dig deep so you can have a sturdy house, a sturdy building, see? That's wise. And, and Luke gives us insight. He says he digs deep and he lays the foundation, see? That's why I admonished you uh, last week, and I've been doing it on radio as well. Get yourself some healing cards, some index cards, if you can see that. Write these things down. Isaiah 53, 4, and 5. That's why I was able to quote it to you a little while ago. It's not because I'm super spiritual. Folks, I put it in there. I read it. I think about it. Sometimes 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, I lie across the bed. My wife will be sleeping. I'm just sitting there saying, himself took my infirmities and bore my diseases. It, 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 it is so exciting. And then you take Matthew 8, 16 and 17. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. He cast those spirits out with his word and he healed all that were sick. Glory to God. And then you get the first Peter 2, 24 and you're ready to shout. Woo, he bore my sins in his own body on the tree. I'm dead to sins. I live under righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. And right beside that, I said, I am healed. It's mine. Praise God. That's my stuff. And I'm digging deep every time you put it before your eyes. Every time you put it in your ears, whether you're hearing yourself say it, or whether you're hearing someone else say it like I'm doing now. Faith is coming. For faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And every time you say by his stripes I'm healed. And every time you hear somebody else say by Jesus stripes you're healed. And every time you put it before your eyes. And you get it on your mind. And it gets down into your reborn spirit. Baby you are digging deep. And you're laying a foundation. And the Bible said that's a wise move. Why? Well, when the flood arose, right in the middle of verse 48, now listen carefully. He didn't say, if the flood arises. He didn't say, well, you know, this might happen uh, depending on what type of year it is or whether it's flu season or not. He said, when the flood arose. In other words, listen to me carefully. There's no doubt about it, the flood's coming. Baby, sickness is coming. Disease is coming. The vicissitudes of life are coming. The Bible says, the Lord is our shepherd and he prepares a table before you. Watch this. In the presence of your enemies. Because they're going to be there. Sin's going to be there. Sickness is going to be there. Disease is going to be there. Poverty's going to be there. Haters are going to be there. Demon spirits are going to be there. Lack is going to come up against you. Disease is going to come like a flood. And the Bible says it's going to try to beat up against that house that you built. And it's going to come at you fast. And it's going to come at you strong. Wrong, and listen to what he said. Could not shake it. <laughs> God, why? Well, it was founded on the rock. This particular disease, listen to me, this particular sickness, this particular illness, this particular infirmity came up against a person that took the time to dig deep. This particular disease came up against a person that took the time to lay a foundation. This particular infirmity came up against a man, came up against a woman, who took the time to get Isaiah 53, 4, and 5 deep in her spirit. Deep in his spirit. He took Matthew 8, 16, and 17. He got it in his mind and renewed it. He put it before his eyes. He got it down in his spirit. And he built the house. 
And when the flood arose, and the winds of adversity blew, and that disease came up against her, she was able to stand. Praise God. Isn't that great news? Woo! Build yourself a healing house. Now, I was teaching this uh, about a week ago on radio. And I was on Periscope at the time, and someone asked me a question. And when I'm on Periscope, I normally don't stop and ask answer questions. But that night, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and told me to answer a particular question. I'm not, again, normally I don't do it because I don't know if you've been on Periscope before. People asking you all this stuff and, and they'll get you off. You'll be talking about what kind of fruit was in the garden after a while, but they just, they just go off on you. you know? So I don't answer them. But the Lord told me to specifically answer them. And it was a valid question. Listen to the question. What is a healing house? Isn't that a good question? What is that? Because remember, I'm saying how to build a healing house, healing house. And he said, well, what is that? So let me give you what a healing house is. I'm going to give it to you word for word the way I got it. Okay. <clears throat> a healing house is spiritual. It's not made with physical hands or natural things. It's built in the spirit. It's you taking the word of God, in this case, healing scriptures, and hedging yourself about. It's you framing your world with your words. The process of you taking the Holy Bible like raw material, putting it before your eyes, putting it in your ears by hearing and hearing and saying and saying until it saturates your mind and gets down in your spirit. That word will then produce a healing virtue that will permeate your entire being and compass you about like a shield. That shield or that umbrella, that force field, is your healing house. Did you get that? It's powerful. Oh, by the way, I did not think that up by myself. I worked for somebody else. By the way, it's the Holy Ghost. Praise God, I don't work for myself. Did you get that? That is powerful. That's what a healing house is. Now, I'll go over again that next week and we'll get to a little bit more detail. But that's what a healing house is. Is. Did you get that? Now, the human spirit, listen to me carefully as you get this. The human spirit was designed by God to feed upon and process the Word of God. I'll be back again next week for the life changing Word from God. Until then, you remember if you're not living a life of love, you're simply not living yet. We'll see you next week. Thank you.